Hey Canucks fans, I hope you are well. The Canucks were back at practice today. A few players missing for maintenance days. A few players that were very interested in on the verge of coming back. I'll break that all down in a second. But I want to talk about last night's game really quickly. Thanks to everyone who joined me on last night's live stream. It was massive because I finally learned how to uh, stream to, to X as well, formerly Twitter. But we had a really, really nice crowd last night. And uh, people were in a good mood. And I, I always preach perspective. Don't get too high with the highs. Don't get too low with the lows. But last night was a statement win. It was a statement game. And I said that before the game. I said if the Canucks lay an egg like they did in Vegas last week, then, then that's really bad with five games going uh, left in the regular season before the playoffs. But the fact that they won last night and they won despite a horrible start. She loves letting in that first goal, but settling down very quickly afterwards. A night that saw so many milestones. Besser hitting 40. Garland hitting 100 goals in 400 games. JT Miller hitting 100 points. So many really, really good stories last night. And overall, it was a, it was a wonderful night in the arena. So uh, it doesn't solve all of the Canucks problems. But you much rather split a season series with Vegas 2-2 as opposed to lose to them 3-1. And remember, as we've explained and we've talked about many times before, we simply don't know who the Canucks are going to play in the first round of the playoffs. We don't know if the Canucks or Edmonton are going to finish first or second in the Pacific. And therefore, one of those teams, the first place team, will likely play wild card one. And that could be Nashville, LA, or Vegas. And the second place team will have to play one of LA or Vegas. So two races that we have our eye on. Vancouver versus Edmonton for first overall in the Pacific to win the Pacific Division. And then Vegas, LA, and Nashville to determine who's wild card one, who's wild card two, and the better of those two um, Pacific Division teams, who's going to actually finish in third in the Pacific Division. So that's why it's so hard to predict who the Canucks are going to play in the first round. Just know that we're going to get an opponent that's going to be tough, and it's going to be a, a very intriguing series no matter what happens. Speaking of intriguing, today the Canucks practice after their big win last night. And basically, if you're really good, you didn't have to practice today. Yeah, because uh, Elias Pettersson, JT Miller, Brock Besser, and Quinn Hughes are four best skaters. They were given maintenance days today. Was it by uh, was it by fluke that it just happened to be those four guys? I'm sure it's pretty strate uh, strategic. I'm sure the I'm not sure if they're going to get any more maintenance days, depending on how how the next few games go. But maybe you see some more veteran players get maintenance days next week. A guy like Ian Cole or a guy like uh, Tyler Myers, but we'll see. We'll see what happens next week. But right now, yes, Pedersen, Miller, Besser, and Hughes all missing from practice. So we didn't really get a good report on forward line rushes or D pairings from practice today. However, two players that were at practice and different kind of uh, different timelines, which kind of different things to look out for, for each of them. Goaltender Thatcher Demko, and center Elias Lindholm. Now with Demko, he came out with DeSmith, with She Loves. There are three goalies at practice. And then Demko basically made it through two-thirds of the practice and then left. So uh, no one was worried about a uh, setback or, or a re-injury of any sort. According to Rick Tockett, after practice, this was the plan all along. Get him to do 60 to 65% today. That would make sense if he was out there for two thirds of the practice. Then maybe next practice you're up to 70, 75% and then you're going full practices. So what this tells me, this tells me that Thatcher Demko will not play tomorrow night when the Canucks host Arizona. There's no way because uh, you're not going to play after not even having one full practice yet with the team. Obviously, we want him to come back. The sooner the better from a standpoint of get the rest off him but we also wanted to come back at full strength or as close to full strength as possible. And I think we'd all agree that we want him full strength for the playoffs as opposed to 90, 80 or 90% for, um, for the last four games of the regular season. So don't expect to, to see Thatcher Demko in net tomorrow night when the Canucks host Arizona. And then the debate comes, well, then who goes in net? Is it Archer Shilovs who just beat Vegas? He'll have a game, a day in between. And he's 3-0 and actually. Now he's beaten... Anaheim, Arizona, and Vegas, so two bad teams and one good team. But he still is 3-0, and 
And you could argue he's playing a bit better than Casey DeSmith is playing. I'm not blaming Casey DeSmith completely uh, individually or uh, fully for the loss in LA, for the loss in Vegas. Oh, those, were, those are two really bad losses, but those are team losses, not goaltending losses. But we'll see. I think you want to get DeSmith in there. You want to get him some confidence as well heading into the playoffs. So if my guess, my guess is that DeSmith starts tomorrow night against um, Arizona. And then if Demko can go on Saturday, he will. But if he can, I, I wouldn't be surprised to see she loves to playing in Edmonton in that massive game this weekend. But we'll cross, cross that bridge when we get to it. The last player I want to talk about is Elias Lindholm. The mysterious Elise Lindholm. Remember, the Canucks never said it, what his injury was, but it was through an Ian McIntyre article from a couple days ago that confirmed it was it is a wrist injury. Lindholm even said today that it was nagging him. He tried to play through it, but they thought it would be better to shut him down for two or three weeks. So I expect Lindholm to play tomorrow. I don't expect Demko to play tomorrow. I do expect Lindholm to play tomorrow. He's been a full participant in practice for the last three or four days. So we'll see um, if he does play tomorrow. And if he does which is good. We want him to get going before the playoffs. We obviously want to see the least lean home that we traded all these assets for to step up and be a difference maker in the playoffs. But I'm always curious to see where he's going to play. Because if it were me, I would load up your top six. I would go a lot of line. I'd go Lindholm, Hoglander, and McKeev as your second line. Then your, um, then your third line, you could go something like, like um, Joshua Bluger Garland. And then your fourth line is Suter, Pod Colson, and someone like PDG or Lafferty or Oman. If you want, I know Rick Tockett really loves center depth, so he loves Miller, Pedersen, Lindholm as your three centers. So if you do that, then you do what you've been doing. You go Miller, Joshua, Garland, you go PD, Hoglander, Besser, and then your third line then can be, um, can be at least Lindholm between the two Russians, so Pod Colson and Mikheyev, then a fourth line of Bluger and Suter together or maybe you move one of those two guys up to the third line. So there's there's a couple of things that you can do depending on where they put Lindholm. Lindholm is naturally a center. I think he enjoys center a bit more, but I have no, I have no problem stacking the tops. Or even if you had to, you could go Miller uh, with, with Besser and Garland. No, they're both right wingers. That doesn't make sense. So you go Miller, Besser, and someone else on the top line, and then you could try Petey Lindholm and Besser, uh, Petey Lindholm or Garland on the second line. Or go Petey Lindholm, Besser, and then Miller, Garland, Joshua as your top six. So a lot of things that you can do, but uh, baby steps. Let's get Elias Lindholm into the lineup, and that should be as early as tomorrow night. Tonight, live stream at 11 p.m., I'll be welcoming Patrick Johnston from the province, Rising Action on X. He'll be coming by to give some insights on, and I'll, I'll pepper him about Demko, she loves Lindholm, where he should play. So make sure you join me. It should be a quick live stream tonight, uh, a quick show, like a fast-paced show. Not that I'm trying to end it early, but I do have to go to church tonight. So again, Tuesday night, tonight, 11 p.m., right here on my YouTube channel. Join me as I welcome Patrick La Johnston. I won't say Patrick Liney. Patrick Johnston to the live stream. Hope you guys can join us. Shout out to my sponsors, Van City Experts Real Estate, Perform, Transform, Personal Training, Weight Loss. Thank you to legendary Lucas Gates, legendary Carol Bovalander, legendary Andrew Chang, and to Hall of Fame and franchise members as well for your support. And thanks to all of you for watching, liking, and subscribing. On your way out, make sure you do those things. Subscribe, like the video. You can leave a donation, become a member, upgrade your membership, and leave me a comment. Tell me how you're feeling after the big Canucks win last night. Maybe also you can tell me where you'd play Elias Lindholm in the lineup tomorrow night, presuming he does play against the Coyotes. Okay, friends, stay safe, stay healthy, take care of yourselves, take care of each other. See you tonight at 11 p.m. God bless and go Canucks go.